looking forward to there definitely seems to be more and more jobs from what they're telling us uh, you know in my course for example uh, where i'm studying they're like you know there are more and more jobs in the industry like we were saying earlier what's happening with hollywood and these jobs moving around the globe and, and also the entry requirements for, for for the for the equipment and stuff being a lot cheaper than they used to be and the time constraints being with with, with linear editing systems like premiere pro and all that kind of stuff now whereas before you were literally cutting the tape up and i'm bet you you're glad you missed that fantastic phase in filmmaking where you're spending four days cutting splicing tape. film yeah. to one another yeah oh uh, you know i miss well i can't miss because i didn't do it i'm sad that i didn't get to do it because i think it's a really important part of film history yes uh filming on celluloid and learning that process it's it's it'll be a, it's a dying art I wish that I mean now I just get instant results and in a way that almost removes how special and actually we we talked about a bit of a decline in filmmaking mm -hmm. um, over the years in Hollywood that is because it's so easy for them to make things now when you are filming on film every take costs money yeah every take costs a lot of money and if you messed up you had to buy more film reel and it was going to be longer for them to process it in the lab and it it took so long and so much effort that these people made sure it was done right. Mm -hmm. They made sure that what they were making was important because they had to make their money back. These days, you, or at least at a lower level, you don't have that. And you can pull these creepy tricks with... I've, I've heard about films where they spend more on the advertising campaign than they do on the film. And what they do is they, they plaster it everywhere and before everyone goes and realizes they should never have gone to see that film they've made their money back mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and it's uh yeah there's a lot of these creepy tricks that go on. it can be it can be done in a positive light as well daniel day lewis my left foot that was a low budget film but his performance was so good that they spent so much money on the advertising campaign so that he could be recommended for an oscar nomination right yeah. so it can be it can be beneficial in a way mm. for on other elements maybe not making their money back but Mm. Do you watch the Oscars? Did you watch the other? I don't. Watch I them. didn't. I. I How do, what do you think of the Oscars? Do you think it's? Do you think it's basically a? It's it's kind of service for the actors. It's not really. I mean, I mean, obviously it serves for the directors as well. But it, it was. It definitely began as a kind of way to massage the egos of the creative class in Hollywood. But yeah, it's. it's it's sort of become a little mm. bit self congratulatory yeah and and i'm I'm very concerned even though we're 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 from the uk and, and and it's not our politics but i'm very concerned in america because of the internet it bleeds over in our culture now as well because it's all in the same place you just click a computer and it's a global voice that you're hearing and that you're talking with it's it, everything seems to be becoming a front for the democratic party <laughs> like everything it's all like uh, there were so many people were talking more about the politics of the oscars than they were talking about the film oh 12 whoa 12 Years a Slave, um, multiple people on the Oscar panel admitted that they hadn't seen the film when they voted for it to become Best Picture. That's depressing. They, they just thought that the film seemed relevant uh, to its time for it to mm -hmm. win the Oscar. So there's definite politics yeah. when it comes to the Oscars. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. No. Um, Oscar, could, could you name the Best Picture of this year? What was the Best Picture? Oh, you mean of 2014? Of 2000, yeah, the, the Oscars that took place just a couple of days ago. Oh, uh, was it not the Imitation Game? Uh, no, it was uh, Birdman. Was it Bir I haven't seen Birdman. I saw Birdman, I thought it was very good. Um, yes. Maybe not Best Picture, but... What kind of genre is it? It's a sort of... Um, drama. Is it just, it, it's, yeah. it's filmed in a way that the whole film looks like it was made in one long take. Right, okay. But it's not, it's made in about ten takes, but they've used clever... Right, and so, so the camera pans and it goes somewhere else. And yeah, it'll show like um, Michael Keaton falling asleep, then the camera pans to the sky, then down across the street, then it's daytime again and it goes back to him waking right. up. so there's never a cut between There's movement. never a there's cut. There's never any movement in, in, in there. And it was so wonderfully done, but um, there, there were some elements of it that made me think, oh, maybe that was a bit too far. But it was a great film. However, in 20 years' time people won't remember the film that won the Oscar they'll remember the film that the people cared about yes. the Oscar books will always show that mm. like, I can't name the best picture from 2008 uh, you know or, yeah well I, I, well I probably could but mm. I definitely remember films that came out back in 2008 that I loved the fact mm -hmm. that this one won an award like you said all it did was massage the ego of those that exactly, were involved yeah. in it for a little while I mean that's while. the interesting thing the thing that I've always been fascinated with are uh, cult classics 
yeah. and looking at you know because a cult the classic has got yeah. no mainstream recognition exactly, but they yeah. had the fan base and it's eventually it's the people that decide mm-hmm. what's remembered the warriors for example the, excellent film in fact it's one of my favourite films uh, and I don't know if it's the fact that it's mostly shot at night but there are so many scenes that anyone that's seen The Warriors they only really need to have seen it once but no one's ever seen The Warriors I know some people like, you ever run across someone that and it's a, it's a classic thing You know, everybody knows this person that hasn't seen Star Wars they haven't seen you know and you, how could you have possibly lived your life <laughs> up until this Without point you don't need Star to have liked it but how could you have missed it like it's it's our culture just puts it there you, you how could you have not accidentally seen Star Wars I worked in a petrol station and a man that lives in Edinburgh who was about 30 years old had never seen nor even heard of Crocodile Dundee really I thought you live in Edinburgh it's yeah. like well not even you live in Britain like it's on ITV like, yeah. every second day you've yeah. got Crocodile Dundee 2 showing exactly well that's actually a question I wanted to ask you uh, speaking of, oh of, there's a segue of Edinburgh. ITV Edinburgh well no no it wasn't ITV Edinburgh I wanted to STV Edinburgh oh well there find. we go uh, it's like ITV but it's specific and this is also ties into what I want to talk about uh, Filth that came out uh, mm. two years ago good film I thought for the most part um, also Train Spotting, good film for the most part um, and, and yeah, the list goes on but do you think in Scotland there was a problem with um, prominent Scottish films that, that gain traction absolutely being, being specifically about Scotland there's never like a, a way to detach it and have it be about just being alive in Scotland but there always has to be a very firm Scottish element to it and you know, politics aside, I mean, that's not, it's not actually relevant. If every film that was made in London was specifically about London, what it's like to be from London, it wasn't just, hey, it's set in London and we're just telling a story. Yeah. We just happen to be in London. The problem with Scotland is that they play that aspect up a little too often. And I think it, it might the They make it too, yeah. um, they have, they have to accentuate the fact that yeah. it's Scottish. Yeah. And too um, whiskey and short you used bread. Filth as an example, and another one that came out uh, was Sunshine on Leith, mm. and they're both based off of other source material. Yeah, and, and I say Filth an partially novel. unfairly because Filth, uh, yeah, it had an element of, but they always do that scene where we're walking through the street and Scotland's yeah. the only, ca- you know, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, not this again. Like, I live here. Come on, don't tell me about the place where I live. Um, and maybe they never do it in a positive light, ever. I know. Scotland, where yeah. people eat chippies or overweight yeah. and they fuck each other. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always, it, and then there was the scene that is, has been so over talk, overly talked about from Train Spotting where he's talking about how Scotland's crap. I and mean, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to listen to this. Like, I don't need to agree or disagree with that. It's just like, why, why does it need to be a component? Why can't, you know, someone will make a film in New York that's just about drug addicts in New York, yeah. but there's there has to be this tacked on a- aspect about identity, which I, can you can make a film about that where it's identity, sure. But if, it's, if the, the prominent films are all like that, there's a two-dimensional aspect to it, which I think harms Scottish cinema, and, and no more so than in the STV and yeah. the thing that we're talking about, where it's it's too local. It's it's or you're not you're using the locality to tell a story about the locality. You're not just using the, where you are to tell a story, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I'm a story I'm that everyone have to can agree relate with to. you there. I, I don't like I I don't like that. I have to agree with that, but. I do, and it's not a statement yeah. about about last year in the it's not the independence game, all that other stuff. It's 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 really not from from my perspective. Even as someone, I mean, I'm someone that would know, but I care deeply about Scotland and and its pursuits culturally. I care deeply that that Scotland should rise to the full height that's demanded of it by its dignity, and I think it's undignifying for Scotland to to, to do that artistically or, or, or in terms of it, for in this example it's film industry to, to play up that aspect because it's, it's belittling itself in a way well you look know? at it's you, you mentioned New itself. York um, look at Ireland yes um, they made in Bruges mm-hmm. great they made the guard great they made Calvary great but it wasn't um Ireland, the land where we eat potatoes yeah. and take things out to sweet yeah. press. It's, it's like, and maybe that's just our thing. But I mean, even I mean, it's even Serbia. It's got, you know, the Serbian film. It doesn't really touch on Serbia as such. It's just all the horrendous things that happen in Serbia. I mean, I suppose the Eastern Europeans are probably annoyed about that stereotype. Every film that's shot in Eastern Europe or is about Eastern Europe involves like torture porn. <laughs> it seems to be not since anywhere east of Vienna. Ever since the Third Man, it's all went downhill 
downhill from there. It was all it's all crazy shit. You found the Orson Welles. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's it's always like what would it look like? I th- I don't know how you feel about those films, the torture porn Saw, for example. Uh, I it, think they're fine. You think they're fine? I've often I, I I so I've always kind of been a little turned off by them because it seems to be like someone's making a film. They go, "What would it look like if we just like rip this guy's head off?" And I'm like, I mean, it doesn't really doesn't really speak to me it's just like well I, I don't want to know what that would look like I'd, I'd prefer to go through my life yeah. not seeing that either fictitiously or in a real sense you know There's, there is a demographic for everything though isn't there I mean people will people enjoy that mm-hmm. uh, did enjoy you ever make the, a film like that um no I don't think I'd I never say never mm. I don't think I'd want to because the element that seems to get it, uh, notoriety is the torture thing when you mention Saw, Saw's got a good story. It's got a good setting. It's got a good villain. It's got all right characters. It's got decent dialogue. What do people remember? They remember the guy sawing his foot off. They remember the blood and guts. It's. Mm-hmm. I think if you're... A t- now, I'm going to change that. Any element taken to an extreme will... It is ro- mm. wrong in cinema because people remember the wrong part. They don't remember the story they don't exactly, remember the yeah. f- they just remember the guy's yeah. blood like gushing out of his yeah. eyeball I mean there's the other side of the equation though uh, it's it, how, how do you feel then about the other side of horror which goes as extremely and it, but in the opposite direction things like paranormal activity well, where it showed like, very little of anything very little of anything but it's all and they use weird creepy methods like they use infrasound do you know what infrasound is when they have like basically uh, um, sound that you can't hear you know what they call it a subsonic oh whatever. so you and, subconsociously and you, yeah, think of something and you, and, yeah. and, but, but not, not that you subconsciously think of something it's almost like a stress inducing sound below the sound um, and, and so it's it's ultrasonic uh, so you can't hear it but you can hear it you know yeah. um, and, and it causes the audience to be tense and this is something they use it's built into the movie itself and it's to scare the audience in the cinema because it induces stress uh, and you can and it happens with animals it's almost like an, a modified version of what they do with cats with those weird cat buzzers yeah. that get cats to fuck off um, you know get the fuck out of my garden now you know, you know I like this method that you're talking yeah. about because I think it's a far more creative way than you know mm. there's a difference between scary and this sort of startling type of horror that you get yeah. where there's just a big loud noise anyone could mm. like I I could tiptoe behind you while you're standing in the street and scream in your ear. That's yes. not scary. That's you. You just got startled. Jump, yeah, jumps. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I like the stuff where there's some grotesque, gory elements spliced with it. I mean, I think I think the seventies and eighties and even the nineties with the rebirth with Scream, Wes Craven's Scream, which I think is still one of the finest horror films ever made. Uh, in terms movie. of slashers, I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, I, the original Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, those are the things where. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens when we just kill someone to fuck with a massive knife but no creativity involved scenes. this yeah, is just people getting stabbed yeah. like good old classic <laughs> yeah, forms of killing it's great there's something timeless about it and I don't know if it's just so associated with the 80s and with the kind of movies that came out back then and with the 70s obviously and what uh, Friday the 13th was uh, was uh, 72 79 Friday the 13th was 1980 I believe what what am I thinking? Dude, Halloween, right? Ha- Halloween, yes. And then there, what is the film where they're all in the cabin by this lake, and at the Friday end the thir- he the, jumps the, out of the lake, and his mother is alert, there because his mother. Yeah, that's a Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know about spoil. I, mean, I, I again, it's one of those films you kind of have to have seen. I think it's Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, my my girlfriend, uh, it was Friday the Thirteenth, and she really wanted to watch Friday the Thirteenth, yes. and we didn't watch Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> you but, weren't in the, you weren't in that place emotionally. No, um, oh, it's, I, I kind of think it's not very good at mm. the time. It must have been great, but like, yeah, back back it's, then but now no. yeah all, even original ideas like comes full circle what we were talking about back at, the, back at the beginning of the show even an original idea if it doesn't s- s- uh, hold up to the to time to, to stand the test of time it can be devalued however yeah right? because it, there has to be an element it, there's a minimum requirement that if it falls below this line of holding up to to the kind of the 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 sands of hit of time the sand of history you know you look at it you go it doesn't matter how original that was back in the day it's crap when you watch it now but if it has that element that brings it above that line it can be you know citizen kane and it's still great 
you know. Uh, it, I it think um, I think it. originality is highly overrated. Mm-hmm. I think just being authentic is far yeah. more important. Doing Everything something that's been done before, but doing it only very a, well. A few yeah. plots that you can actually use. It just depends how you use them. Yeah, a film about a goat. You know, there you go. Here's a film about a it's, goat. Those movies are always like by like Spanish directors. You know, like what's the one where the kid's El on the goat. boat with the El tiger? Chupacabra. What is that called? Uh, again? Life of Pi. Life of Pi. I I haven't seen it, but when I hear about those films, I go, oh, it's right. It's one of those films. It's probably good, but it's like, I mean, I don't know how well Slumdog Millionaire will hold up to the test of time. Because I remember that was one of those films that was much loved back in 2008. It won an Oscar. Oh, no, no, the, won the best. Yeah, yeah. it did. And director Danny, Danny Boyle. Yeah, and the front up. front guy, the guy that was in Skins, uh, that was uh, the, kid, De- the De- Asian De- kid Patel, that was in yeah. Skins. Yeah, he he won Dev Patel, right? Yeah, he, he won an Oscar for his part in that as well. And I think it was a BAFTA. Was it a BAFTA? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I don't but, know how well uh, that hold up. The, using the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire thing is, it's, it's put a time on it. Mm. We we were discussing earlier about how. Um, Ted, the comedy, was telling jokes about what was going on at the time that it won't be relevant um, yeah. once that time's passed. Yeah. Whereas um, Doctor Strangelove, did you see it? Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove? I haven't seen Doctor Strangelove. Ah, uh, then I won't even bother. You know, I have, I have, I was thinking, Stanley Kubrick is a, a guy that I don't, I have not seen, I, for example, you have a Clockwork Orange tattoo on mm. your arm, I noticed earlier. I have not seen a Clockwork Orange. I have a Clockwork Orange on video, which is why I haven't seen it. <laughs> I have it on video. I can't believe I can watch the thing. And I've had it for 20 years. I used to sit on my shelf and I always used to know that, oh, that video. You know, when you're a little kid and you're learning how to read and you're like Clockwork Orange. But it wasn't until later that I realized it was about... It wasn't until <laughs> you're later that I re- read Clockwork Orange is yeah. not a good place to start. Oh, yeah, but I, was, I would read the spines of the videos yeah. that were sitting on the shelf. And so I, uh, that was there for my entire life. I also had... um. What was it called? Oh, I forget what it's called now, but it's the guy with all the spikes in his head. Right. Hellraiser. The Hellraiser, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that either, but that that video cover used to scare the shit out of me. God, Ross kid. Hepburn will be, li- if he's made it this far, Yes, he'll be listening to this, pulling his hair out of his head, just like, I fucking hate Hellraiser. Why are they talking about uh, Hellraiser? I have not seen it. I just I just <laughs> know of this video cassette cover that used to scare the shit out of me. But Clockwork Orange, it wasn't until I was older and I used to read the, you know, used to, uh, I heard about what it was about. I was like, oh, it's about milk and rape. Like, <laughs> I haven't, like that's the best summation because there used to be a trailer on one of my other videos that had a Clockwork Orange uh, and it had been released on a motion picture cassette, you know, it yeah, was like, yeah. and it, or no, no, it was a DVD and it was saying Clockwork Orange is now on DVD and it was one of, they, they didn't do that. DVD weren't very good at keeping up with putting trailers before the DVDs, but you'd always have trailers before the video. You ever noticed yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But DVDs, you'd only sometimes have trailers. But mostly it would just go straight to the menu. Um, but I remember seeing an ad where Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange is now on DVD. And it was it was basically people raping people while drinking milk. And I was like, okay, I need to see this film, but I've still not fucking seen it. It's not day. just people raping no, people. I'm sure while it's more complex than that if it's Kubrick. Um, I love the conspiracy you mentioned earlier about the octopus uh, that people think that Kubrick used. And we were talking before the show about 2001 A Space Odyssey that was mm. on TV only a few nights ago. And I'd never seen it before. That they, he had used his set to fake the moon landings. Have you heard that conspiracy? <laughs> oh my God, it's terrible. 1968, it comes out. They land on the moon. It came out before they landed on the moon. So, uh, I mean, that, which is crazy when you think about it because we have this like moment in our head where you get the epochs like where things happen and before that you think of the world in a different way and after it you think in a, in a whole new way and you go this film came out before they landed on the moon yeah he's playing internet chess uh, on his console <laughs> he has a microwave and there's some ideas where you're like Star Trek same kind of thing where they were coming up with like ideas like automatic doors uh, um, with the exception of one theory that says that the Greeks actually invented automatic doors with weights and pressure pressure slabs and shit like that but they, they they had that idea in the original series Star Trek they had guys behind those doors pulling them going oh come make, on you can do a better make, sound effect than that well yeah the, the Foley machine over here but like you know like you know it was like this kind of hydraulic hiss I can do the sound I, I know the exact go, way they did go, the sound go. they just covered one nostril and they just go really that's oh, all it right. <laughs> yeah it's um there's a great scene actually in Faulty Towers when he kicks the door open uh, to, when he's, and, he's, and he's running it Manuel and you kick it and you see the producer with a TV box you, <laughs> you see always that? see that great... it's like in every movie yeah. movies that, that I've made uh, mm. to get back on track I can still see microphone yeah. shadows and I can I can see like the lens that I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be using sitting in the Once background you, see it, you can't unsee it as well yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't want to point it out because you know people give out to me 
they'll they'll look they'll look at um like open lines and they'll um start taking the taking the piss because I see yeah. it every single time I watch it. Mm. I think that's kind of the curse of the person that makes it. I I think it's I, and and it's hard to tell if if you go well if I can see it or other people noticing it and a couple of people will you know those critical people and you you go what do you think and the first thing they say. They can be lovely people, but that kind of person, the first thing they say is always negative and critical. Yeah. And they don't even mean it. They're just like, you know, uh, I have a friend uh, that, that's like that. And, and every time she does it, I'm like, oh, God damn it, Sam. Uh, it's like, why did oh, you, you just that? name dropped her now? No, She'll yeah, know yeah, what she you're doesn't, about. She doesn't mind. I was like, you know, I was like why, why have you noticed that? I was hoping you wouldn't notice that, you know, but, but she notices it anyway. I know other people are like that, but it's, it's uh, most people, you can't tell if I notice it or other people noticing it. For the most part, they don't. But it sticks in your mind like a like a nail in a plank of wood. You know, it's like you can't. Every time you look at, it, you're like, oh, I wish I could just undo that somehow. But you can't for the most part. Like you got, you know, in some cases, like a camera shadow. There's probably some programs you can use to to get rid of that. Nothing worse than when you go to the cinema and you see the top of the shotgun mic oh coming into the frame. God. You ever seen that one? Yeah. Oh my god. It's I, like, dude, I'm watching this film for the first time and I can see the yeah. microphone. Your editors must have been working on it for like months and they didn't once see that shotgun mm-hmm. microphone yeah like, um, some of the continuity errors I have and then open like, for, for, for those who don't know Open Lines is a short film I made around six months ago on pretty much no budget mm-hmm. um, harmless errors like I accidentally left a packet of batteries on the desk who cares like yeah. but it's just like well why would this yeah. guy in a radio show have mm-hmm. batteries on the desk but it's harmless like yeah. nobody would pick up on that as an error but no. when I'm watching it right now it's like why has he got batteries mm-hmm. on the desk but even if you did notice it it's the kind of thing where someone go I suppose that could be rationalised in some way I mean maybe he has a TV remote and he's going to need batteries yeah. occasionally for his TV remote and he just leaves them there all the time continuity errors uh, you get what is it Cinema Sins the guy that just looks at films and says this is everything wrong with or is this, this thing where it's like everything wrong with this in and so, minutes. so minutes yeah, or less? Yeah, cinema sins. And some of the, the criticisms, I'm like, okay, that's that's not You're warranted. pulling at straws here, yeah. mate. Come on. Yeah. But it's it, it's made for entertainment purposes. Like, he knows that people are going to disagree with some of the stuff he's saying. He just yeah. does it to pull people's legs and, and fuck around with them. But yeah, he's, he's, some continuity errors I would never have been aware of until someone pointed them out to me. You know? What, like a stormtrooper bashing his head off the. Yeah, when they're coming through the blast door. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> or Meatloaf's pants falling down in Fight Club in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that one. No. Uh, they're all walking down the street and Meatloaf's walking, he's like quite far in the background and somehow his trousers just fall down to his mm. ankles and he has to quickly right. scramble to get them mm. back up. Meatloaf, uh... oh, Meatloaf, the character in that film. No, Meatloaf the singer. Yeah, was, okay, yeah. right. He was in Fight Club. He, yeah. He's Big Bob with the, the big breasts. Really? That's Meatloaf. That's Meatloaf. I only associate with him as being this all you know insane glam rock guy where it's yeah. like Okay, right, I, I did not know that was Meatloaf. Right, fair enough. Because he's like bald in the movie, isn't he? Mm-mm. No, he's short hair. Short short hair. He's not yeah. got the, he's not got the long hair. Um Right, right. That but his that character's intentionally quick. overweight and he's got massive like gimmicky hanging yeah. man boobs. He's a guy that hasn't stood up all that well at the test of time. I mean, you know, in, like, I, I was never a fan of him in no. the first place. Um, but no. you know, he's, he's, he's got his hell, fan base. Battle of Hell, if you're drunk enough, is still like, yeah. Oh, you know, man, like, I mean, I don't get drunk, and when I'm in a club and Battle of, battle of Hell starts, I just think, oh, for fuck. Yeah. Because I know that it's going to last for about Highway 10 Highway to the minutes. Danger Zone. Uh, if you watch Top Gun, the number of times they play Highway to the I Danger Zone. I haven't seen Top Gun. You haven't seen Top Gun? No, it's, I haven't. It's... You know, it's just a movie about the guy that flies planes. I mean, it's a it's a good film. Well, the occasional beach ball, yeah, yeah, and the occasional <laughs> beach ball, and 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 uh, what is he singing in a bar? Right, uh, that's another famous scene from Top Gun where he's singing at the check in the bar. It's um, it's basically you know they play that highway to the danger zone, right? But the, you will hear that over and over again, even if you don't hear the vocals, you'll hear just the beat starting. You know?